I'm excited to see the arc you guys have coming up for the new Morpho. Is there anything you can tell us about what is in store? Uh, ambiguity. Nice. Because <laughs> uh, the Blue Morpho is a sort of mysterious entity whose, whose persona is sort of taken on by various people. Right. A uh, mantle. Yeah. So I think that's all I can say. But there's definitely a, 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 a blue morph of thread through the new season. Yeah. So if you got that shirt club shirt in the last season, then you'll be breaking it out <laughs> for season seven. Hold on, Ray Daniel, are you going to see any more from him this season? Yes. As I recall, I remember seeing that in a script. Uh, a script that we recorded like a year it's ago. Yeah, this is the, the, the trickiest <laughs> comprehension now. Yeah. I vaguely recall uh, <laughs> the colors blue and red at the beginning of the season. Well, I, I try to stick to colors with all my books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very patriotic show. <laughs> Documentary is white. <laughs> there's also a white whale. Yeah, there's white. So, yes. Well, you've already taken my next question. Red, white. <laughs> <laughs> I have a who would win question. Ah. Okay, so who would win between Brock Lesnar and Brock Samson? Yeah. Who's Brock Lesnar? I don't know. But okay, so Brock, right? that's okay. He's an MMA fighter and a WWE wrestler who looks very much like Brock. He's real a real life. person. Yes. Then there's no way he can win. Brock, <laughs> yeah, Brock Samson would win because he's a cartoon character and he can do anything. <laughs> he's got that steel plate. I think it's a steel plate that really does it. Yeah. And the, the uh, tattoo and the mullet. I mean, yeah. The mullet is in biblical <laughs> powers. Yes, Samson. <laughs> Business in the front, death in the back. <laughs> <laughs> what does this other Brock's hair look like? There you go. Not so much. Uh, there you go. Oh. oh, there he is. Yeah, he's got kind of a. Does he have a zipper on his thing? That's a sword. A no, sword. That sometimes he's taken for another tattoo. Like, yeah. This has like a weird creature thing on his back. <laughs> he does. But he also has a tramp stamp that says kill them all. So. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, he's does. good in the really? real world, but in the world of the Venture Brothers, he would stand a chance. <laughs> How well would he. They would have to also fight naked. And covered only in blood. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, we like a Roman style. <laughs> yes, evil people style. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I had something and then I lost it. <laughs> And all that green vivid imagery. Of yeah, exactly. Naked <laughs> Give me back into my car. <laughs> Yellow submarine. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, most of the story are, are from Dr. Venture has revolved around uh, failure for the first six seasons. Second time, let's <laughs> go. Um, I, I feel like in well, the last season, we kind of broke that mold. He started to do better for himself. Is he going to fail this season, or is that just he's a piece of <laughs> Shall I feel this one? I mean, it's for you. I would say that it, since moving to New York and inheriting his late brother's money, it's and with the boys sort of maturing in a sense and not being under his wing as much, being in college, Hank is working and going out with girls, and getting very confident. So I think that does give Doc a sort of energy and a sort of second wind, the kind of middle-aged new Nissan line. Although he's still totally restricted by his own limitations. <laughs> and by the fact that his support circle and his, both his support circle and his enemies are always thwarting and making sure he doesn't hurt himself and others. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's got a kind of, uh, I think he's got like a, 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 a return to a kind of old cocky energy in the last season and the current one, which is fun. Yeah. I like him in that state. Yeah, it's a good state for him to live in. It's nice to see him. I think if the question was about him failing or not or winning, yeah. um, I think the interesting thing to, to observe is what objectively happens in his life versus what his take on his life is now. That you know, he, I don't think Doc thinks he's doing as poorly as maybe the viewer might. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there, there is some. There are some moments in the new season where he's extremely deluded. <laughs> yeah. Where pretty much he thinks something's happening, 
and actually never really figures it out. <laughs> never figures out that he's living in a fool's paradise. Ignorance is truly bliss. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I say winning, because I think there's some Hollywood examples of people who feel great success. Maybe the uh, outside view of that is not the same as the subjective view. <laughs> So we've seen the family evolve and devolve the same way, but the, the kids are growing up. Uh, Dr. Venture's kind of trying to change himself, reinvent himself, the same with all uh, what happened with everything. How's that been for you guys having to, every season kind of change, evolve with the fa um, with Ventures? I know that uh, early on for Dean's arc, there were a number of radical turns and uh, new directions that were thrown at us, uh, which have come from very many different reasons. There was, I know early on, when we did panels, like, for the first couple of seasons, at this very common con, we, uh, Jackson told me he was a little confused by why people like Dean. He's like, objectively, Hank is the cool brother. Dean is lame. So why do people like him? So he endeavored to make Dean more lame, which only garnered more sympathy from fandom, and then he was like, I don't know what to do anymore. And then it went a couple different directions. So, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> How has it been evolving the character? Uh, yeah. Even if he's getting lamer, but getting cooler. Yeah, and then, then he got super cool with the, like, got a little stash, and he's got the, the, the black onesie. I know it's a sweet suit. Um, it's, it's cool because, well, the, the, the biggest turn, I, uh, I'd mentioned this before at the other table, that no longer having a reset button on Dean means that he's now the, the sum of his experiences, not just running with scissors and then reset and insert a new Dean here. So it's been great. And, and I think, not unlike in the real world, his twists and turns are not that predictable. Um, and and for me, I feel like Dean is kind of especially a more human character in this world of wackiness. Um, and I think while his evolution has not been straightforward, it's been natural. If that makes sense. And yeah, I think Dr. Venture, I don't know that Dr. Venture has evolved so much as through the seasons. New other colors have been revealed. It was actually a couple seasons ago, there was uh, moments where he really sort of bonded with Dean uh, in a kind of a sweet way, in like a genuine father's yeah. way, which was a color that we didn't really see before. I don't know that he became a better parent, it's just that circumstances allowed that color to come out. <laughs> and I think it was really necessary, because Dean for so long, he just loved Pop. And, and, yeah, and Pop other than was just, always sort of indifferent and annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which seemed cool. So cool. Yeah. So I have a question with, uh, you know, the Monarch, really effective, unintentionally, to being the Blue Morpho. Could Dr. Venture unintentionally be an amazing villain? Well, yes. Yes, he could be. He's got all the makings of a great villain. <laughs> <laughs> kind of is a villain, really. Yes. A well, non-villain. That, that's right. un unintentionally, sometimes Humorous. you manifest who you really yeah. are. And yeah. now resources. So, I think that'd be a fantastic new direction. Now that you can afford to be a great villain. <laughs> Be a short burst of villainy, yeah. Yeah. right? But yeah, I don't think he could. I don't think he would be in it for the long haul. And he's essentially, if not a decent guy, a benign. Guy. Not a cool person. <laughs> yeah. Just. <laughs> yeah. So does that mean that if you're like Gronk, is the better man? <laughs> in the in probably yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, because Brock is parent to Doctor Venture. Mm -hmm. I think Brock is a little uh, wiser in his parenting than Dr. Even, Venture is. Even as a babysitter, perhaps a better father figure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Though, arguably, um, Doc, of course, has more of an influence on Dean. Dean's trajectory, wanting to know about science and everything. In fact, he doesn't want to, I mean, if anything, Brock could be Hank's father figure, but not Dean's so much, I don't think. Also, oh, Dr. Girlfriend has sort of a great parental figure on the show, too. Or yeah. for him, parental in the sense of thoughtful, overseeing, circumspect, nurturing, nurturing, and uh, forgiving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Terrible forgiving. Terrible. Uh, you mentioned Dr. Girlfriend. Uh, what about the Cupid ones? Are we going to see anything else? Are, are they making a return the series? I, I know that we, they kind of moved away from them a little bit in the last series. I don't really see much. I don't think in the new season. From what I recall, 
a year ago. Yeah. I went and stumped him. Yeah. Doing the stuff kind of. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm like. I think I'm blurring seasons as I go back. Yeah, this show really becomes a blur. It's true. <laughs> Not that there are that many episodes, considering how long it's been. <laughs> yeah. And yet. I don't know. I don't know. You should ask that handsome fella who wrote it. Yeah. So, either of you inherited a large fortune like Dr. Venture did, what would you do? As James and Michael, or as... Oh, no, as yourself. Well, obviously, uh, create world peace. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, eat healthy food. What kind of fortune are we talking about? <laughs> a million dollars, which doesn't go anywhere anymore? Or... A you, inher dollars. you inherited an entire, let's say, billion dollar stay. Buildings, everything. Oh, we could form our own town. Yeah, we could. We could secede from the Union and start our own town. <laughs> That's a good idea. And make that town great. Not again. Just great. <laughs> no, no. Just great. <laughs> yes, That's the first time. We're going to get it right the first time. And learn yes. everything. We did, there would be a lot of funding in the arts in our town. A lot of funding in the arts. I based that maybe on Francis' model. And then yeah. I, would, I would want to look... Just to keep our to, to appear legitimate and to feel familiar, I'd want to look at American historical things and maybe do like our version of a Boston Tea Party. Or, yeah, yes. yeah, we'll take the uh, Jones. Um, <laughs> you know, we find each other. Well, I, I don't see why you would. She said Jonestown. Why you suggest that two guys who start their who secede from the Union and form their own country? Just because they claim it's theirs would be a cult. I don't know why I don't go there. <laughs> but the, the more I've been sitting on this question from you, thank you, I've been thinking, you know, I, I have actually been kicking around the idea of starting a cult. Famously, if you really want to make a lot of money, that's a great way to go. That's, but it, that's what uh, Elrond said. Well, <laughs> that is what Elrond said. Now, in all the documentaries I see where they end up being kind of mean to people or like kicking the pregnant person or working people to death or <laughs> making them take the poison or wear the same dumb shoes, I feel like I could easily make a cult that's just about making everyone feel happy. I won't punish you or be a crazy pants. Just a place where everyone, I can have a whole lore and it would be based on my 12-year-old self's uh, view of the world. Uh, I was quite precocious, and I came up with a philosophy for living called Nowism. And I was a Nowist monk. And uh, it was all about seizing all the potential of this right and not being caught up in the... Well, it's, it gets deep, and uh, you'll have to pay me to find out more. But um, if I started that cult with all that funding, I think I could make the world a happier place. Less productive, but a happier place. And then what would happen to anyone who tried to leave the cult? Uh, they would. They were welcome to go be more sad. <laughs> and they'll go from home. They wouldn't be eliminated. Uh, there's no need to eliminate them. This is the happy place. If they don't want to be part of the party anymore, they can go. And then they'll feel the cold right. thing. Yeah. You gotta brainwash them. Like, teach the children well was a... I was gonna say, get them early, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so with kids, yeah. bring them up. Yeah, no abuse, no, no slavery. No, 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 yeah. I mean, you still have to give me all your possessions. Yeah. Because... Would there be a military, like, or, or a police type of, or enforcers in your cult? Just wondering if you're hiring, because that would be a... You know, oh, because that's what you would I would totally. Position. And you're, you're not anyone else's son. Yeah, sure. You would have a security force called the Fruit of Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and they all wear a sort of attractive... Shirts with nice patterns. And <laughs> Hopefully with a, a skinny yeah, tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe have some learning 80s ties. 80s ties. <laughs> and I have these like folding sunglasses. They fold up into a quarter. So instead of just like whipping them out, and like it's more, yeah. it's a little extra. Cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Merchandise for the cult. That's great. Yeah. Sort of like the new wave character on Square Pegs. Yeah. Johnny. Uh, and all of them would have their own theme music. <laughs> yeah. With synthesizers. Because that's the greatest instrument. This is a very interesting topic that we've completely uh, jumped over to. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? The Venture Brothers. Uh, so I should make this cult? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. I think Comic Con's a good place to start it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to start it anywhere. <laughs> or there'll be a Kickstarter uh, short. One day, like maybe in 30 years, there'll be some HBO documentary or HBO. -O -O. It started as a joke. It started as a joke at Comic Con, yeah, yeah. but this is going to be the original footage, so this is very valuable footage. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, that's great. I'm glad you're here. All right, very good. On that note, thanks.